Picture this, December 2nd, 2014. We're in Afghanistan with Bravo Company, 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, and they're teamed up with Afghan Special Ops, 49 Rangers, locked and loaded, ready to make some noise. But here's the twist. They're not just up against your run-of-the-mill insurgents. They're facing an enemy that's practically breathing down their necks. Just 30 feet away, enter Staff Surgeon James B. Jones. This guy doesn't flinch. The moment the bullets start flying, he's on it, returning fire like a one-man army. But he's not stopping at that. Oh no, he's got a pocket full of fragmentation grenades, and he's not afraid to use them. While he's getting ready to rain down some explosive surprises, Staff Surgeon Dirk J. Anderson steps up. He's got his M4, and he's laying down a wall of lead, pinning the enemy right where they are. Now, you might be thinking, why is this so important? Well, Anderson's suppressing fire is the linchpin. It's what keeps the enemy stuck in their tracks, making them sitting ducks for Jones grenades. And let me tell you, when those grenades go off, it's game over for the enemy. But hold on, this isn't your typical firefight. These rangers are under a barrage of rocket-propelled grenades and machine gun fire. It's like being in the eye of a storm. But instead of rain and wind, it's bullets and shrapnel. This isn't just a story of Valor. It's a masterclass in teamwork and tactical brilliance. It's about men who know their roles, execute them flawlessly. And do it all under the kind of pressure that would break most people. And trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So we've got Staff Surgeon Dirk J. Anderson and Surgeon Travis Dunn. And these two are like the dynamic duo of this operation. They spot a group of six enemy fighters skulking along the southern wall of a compound. Anderson and Dunn don't hesitate. They open fire and take down five of the six. But here's where things take a turn. Dunn, armed with his M320 grenade launcher, moves toward a breach in the compound wall. He's about to unleash hell when, bam, he's shot in the upper torso and tumbles down into a courtyard below. It's like one of those moments in a movie where time slows down and you can feel the tension in the air. Anderson, without missing a beat, rushes to Dunn's aid. Forget about cover, forget about his own safety. He sprints into that courtyard, dodging bullets and RPGs, and drags Dunn back to safety. Dunn's quickly treated for his wounds and evacuated, but the fight's far from over. This firefight stretches on for a grueling six hours. When the smoke clears, more than 25 enemy fighters are dead. And get this, during the award ceremony, Anderson says, anybody in this battalion or in this regiment would do the exact same thing. I just happen to be the one standing there. Talk about humility, right? Anderson and Jones are later awarded Silver Star Medals for their courage under fire. They're not the only heroes of the day. Four other Rangers also get recognized. Surgeon First Class David White and Dunn receive the Bronze Star with Valor. Dunn also gets a Purple Heart. Matthew He and Christopher Carvalho are both awarded Joint Service Commendation Medals with Valor. Now, let's switch gears for a second. March 2nd, 2005. We're in Paktika province along the Pakistan-Afghanistan border. Master Surgeon Sarin Sars Blackhawk is sent on a recon mission to examine some suspicious buildings. They land, and immediately, they're under fire. Sar and his medic quickly separate from the rest of the team to chase down insurgents who've run toward a nearby village. They reach a house, and Sar goes in. He's immediately under heavy fire. The first two shots miss, but the third hits him square in the forehead. You'd think that's it for Sar, right? Wrong. The bullet hits the lower edge of his Kevlar helmet, saving his life. He gets up, pushes into the next room, 
and takes out the enemy fighter. For his efforts, Sar is awarded the Silver Star. So, you've heard about the valor, the medals, and the heroics, but let's talk about the aftermath. What happens when the dust settles, and the adrenaline wears off? Well, for starters, these men don't just hang up their boots and call it a day. No, they go back to training, honing their skills, and preparing for the next mission. It's a never-ending cycle of readiness, because let's face it, the enemy doesn't take a day off. Now, let's zoom out a bit and talk about the broader implications. These operations, as intense and localized as they may seem, are part of a much larger strategy. They're cogs in a machine designed to disrupt enemy networks, gather intelligence, and maintain a state of constant pressure on hostile forces. And it's not just about the guys on the ground. It's a concerted effort involving intelligence agencies, local allies, and sometimes even rival factions. The battlefield is complex, and these men are navigating it with the precision of a surgeon. But what about the home front? These soldiers have families, loved ones who wait anxiously for news, who live every day with the knowledge that their husband, son, or brother is in harm's way. It's a different kind of courage, a different kind of resilience, but it's just as vital to the mission. Support from home fuels these men, gives them something to fight for, something to come back to. And let's not forget about the unsung heroes, the medics, the engineers, the support staff. These are the people who make sure the guns are loaded, the wounds are treated, and the plans are executed to the letter. They may not be in the spotlight. But their role is crucial. Take. For instance, the medics who treated Dunn and got him evacuated, their quick thinking and expertise saved a life that day. No question about it. So, what's the takeaway? It's not just about the firefights and the medals, it's about the human element, the network of support and expertise that makes these operations possible. It's about the sacrifices, both big and small, that go into safeguarding freedom and security. And it's about the stories that often go untold, the stories that get lost in the noise, but deserve to be heard. 